In this video, I'm going to clean up another thing that we have been taking care of, but we haven't taken care of for the users. And that's this ID field whenever we add anything to an access database. Um, you know, if we're doing to an SQL, this is not a problem. We don't even show this field. Things get added okay. But we try to add something here without that ID in there. It throws an error. It says you've got to have this. Um, so access forces us to either manually put something in here for the ID or um, it's going to throw an error. So what we can do rather than manually putting it in here and forcing the user to keep track of these because they won't know, um, we're going to add some code. And this code, uh, I don't know how much this I want to explain, but uh, there's a couple different ways to do this. I'm going to add it here and it, we're going to add it to the data source. So my data source, whenever we insert anything, we're going to run this code. And this code, the first thing we do is basically set up a new SQL query. And this SQL query says select the max ID from, and you just, the only thing you need to change here is the name of this to match your table. So I'm going to get the max ID from my events table, and my ID is my primary key. Um, so this sets up the query, and then we also set up a variable to store that ID number in when we get it back. And then we open up a connection to the database, and we run that query. Um, where we execute the scalar right here, and then we add one to it. So, um, and we basically what we do is we go to the database and say, what's your maximum ID? We add one to that, and then we go through our command parameters for this access data source. And we know it's parameter zero. It's like the, f you know, think of it, we start counting at zero. It's the first field in the database. Why well, just set that to whatever this new ID is? So anyway, by doing this, let's just save this, and we'll go back and refresh this page to run that VB code. Okay, so now when I add something in here, we can add in a... add something in, display date, whatever, author... and now when we insert this, even without the ID, was successfully added to the database, we can uh, turn to the admin page and we can edit events and we see that Titanium Man is now in there. So I'm just going to add this fix to all of the, um, all three pages. So all of our pages where we add, so we had add event and add news. I'm also going to add it here. And as long as I'm access data source one is the name of my data source, I won't have to change this. The only thing I have to change here is the name of the table I'm reading from. So this one is news. And let's just go check. I'm going to check my database explorer here. And my name of my table is not news, it's newsletter. And this, again, this assumes that the name of the field is ID, which, you know, I just set mine all up that way. And then we'll also add one for products. So let's see, there's add news, and let's go and fix this for add products. And again, I should check to make sure it's access data source one, but we will uh, we'll run the code just to make sure too. And then this one is in the database, is products. So Again, you know, if you're doing this in SQL Server, which you probably would be when in production, you won't have to worry about this. It just takes care of itself. But as long as we're dealing with access here, we need to take care of this. So let's go back here now and um, go back to the admin page. Okay, so we added an event. Let's create a newsletter entry. And I'm, again, I'm not going to fill out the ID, and this is a test. And we won't put too much stuff in here because we're just going to delete this anyway. So now and again when we say insert, it's inserted. We can return to the admin page and let's look at the um, newsletter. And here's the test one. So got it added in there. We'll just delete it. And now let's go back to our admin page and we'll create a new product section. And 
category as whatever it is. Uh, he doesn't sell skis. I'm just putting this in here just to test it. We'll insert and return the admin page. Edit. So there's skis. I'm going to delete that. And so everything's, everything's working out great. Um, so the last thing we might do then is in our interface is go back and not even show that ID field. So when we create an event, let's not even show this ID box. So all, all our creations, let's get rid of that. So again, I'll do it on one, and then you, if you want to watch all of them, you can. But here on Add Event, I'm just going to come through here, and on this bound field, I'm just going to take this out. So we could do it, you know, through the design view. I'm just going to take it out here, and then uh, there's Add Event, Add News. Get rid of this bound field for the ID. And then what we see, we got event news, and we got to find add product. In this page, we'll get rid of the ID. Okay, so let's save everything and just go test it all one more time. So we'll go back to our admin page. Create an event. So you notice our ID field's not there anymore, and our event will be whatever. Um, um, display date is whenever. So we insert it. Great. So let's just return the admin page. So I'm, you know, I'm not going to check the rest of those, but let's edit these and get rid of some of these. So. Okay, so that's the end of it. That's uh, handling those uh, IDs.